When I looked at design patterns online, I always found that it was difficult to understand the practical implementation of these design patterns because the examples given were always so basic. They didn't really apply to anything. So I thought I'd create a series where we use practical examples to explain design patterns. In this video, we're going to take a look at the factory method pattern. But to understand that, first you need to understand what the simple factory is. So let's take a look. A simple factory must abstract the creation of a class away from the client. A simple factory must have a public method which will return different objects based on a given input. So let's take a look at our project. We have a main.php file here, which has a class that just imports CSVs. So imagine now we have a CSV that has product data in it, and we would like to import that data and save it to a database. So if we take a look at our source code, we have a CSV uh, class. It's the same one being called, so you notice import. And we have some CSV products. So just uh, imagine we've already read this product data from our CSV, and we have uh, chairs in our product data. Then we start looping over each one, and we validate, because we always want to validate data before storing it, and then we save it to our database. Now, if we take a look at validate and save in our chair model, it's just very simple. It's just echoing out stuff to the terminal. So if we had to run this by going run, and we have validate chair, save chair, validate, save, etc. Okay, that's because we have three products, and it's doing validate and save. So that is the project we're going to be working on. So it's fine for now. But what happens if we needed to support a new type of product, say a desk? So you might think, OK, cool, I'm just going to do this. I'll have a new model for desk. I'll validate and save. Now, you can see how it's already becoming a problem, because we'd have to have if statements here to check if it's a chair, or if it's a desk, or whatever type of product, so we can use that model. Now, I'm not sure if you heard new is glue. You can see that we are newing up objects here, and that means we're coupling them to this import code, which is not something we want to do. We are making it harder to test as well, because this is being newed up inside our import method. So you can see how this might not be good going forward. So to avoid doing this, we can use the simple factory. So let's implement our simple factory. The first thing we're going to do is create a product interface. Okay, we're going to say interface product. It's going to have save and validate as the two public methods. And we should give it a namespace of study stream and OK, that's our product interface. And we're going to take chair and it's going to implement our product interface. OK, now we're going to create desk as a separate model. We're going to call desk here, save desk, validate desk. OK, so we have two types of products with an interface of product. Right now, we're going to create a new class, and we're going to call this class product factory. OK, so if we remember from our definition, actually here, a simple factory must have a public method which will return different objects based on a given input. OK, so we're going to have one public method. We can call it create, and we can accept input. So we can accept a type, and we can return product. OK, so a type of product, we want to return either a chair or a desk. So we can have a switch statement in here, and it can take type. Cool. And we're going to have our case, and our case is going to be, um, let's have this chair in lowercase. And we can return a new chair. And we can duplicate this for desk, and we can return desk. And finally, we can have default, and it will be throw new exception. And we can say if, no, we can say the requested product was not found. OK. So we can simplify that and correct that. Cool. So we have a simple switch statement here. You can see if we have a chair, we get a new chair object. And if we have a desk, we get a new desk. And if we go to our uh, docs again, 
a simple factory must abstract the creation of a class away from the client. So in this case, our CSV, this is our client or our calling code. And inside a product factory, we're going to have the newing up. Because you see, we have to do this newing up somewhere. Okay. Now, we're going to go back to our main.php. And we're going to say products factory. If I could type. And we're going to say new product factory. Simplify that. Okay, cool. So product factory has to be newed up here. Okay. Well, just imagine, say you're working with a framework. And the framework, like let's say Laravel has an IOC container, so you can use dependency injection and just get that new instance. But in this case, we're just going to send it to CSV. Okay, so we go back here and we're gonna use a constructor and we're gonna declare protected property for um, product factory. We're gonna call it product factory and we can copy this. Because remember, we are getting it here. So we're going to say this product factory equals the product factory. Cool. So now we have access to a new instance of product factory. Right here, we can say this product factory and access our create. And we can take type to CSV product. And it can be type. So we'll pass it the string. Okay. And then we can just do this product. In fact, with this, we'll store our new object as product. We can say product validates and save. Right now, so now you can see how much better this is looking. There's no if statements and stuff in here in our client code. We just, it doesn't matter what type of product it is, as long as we support it. It will do a validate and save. Okay. So now if we go back to create, so if you did want to uh, add a new type of product, it will go in here. So unfortunately, we might or we have to have the newing up somewhere and we have to have the if statement or switch statement somewhere. But if we can abstract that away to its own place, like this create method, it makes sense and we can handle it there it doesn't affect the actual calling code. So finally, we can go back to our main.php and run it. And you can see we have validate chair, save chair, and all the way to desk. So from the perspective of the code actually working the way we wanted it to work, it still works the same. It's just that our code is a lot neater now, more testable, and it also does not break the open close principle for our calling code. So now that you know how to use a simple factory, we're going to move on to the factory method pattern. So now that you understand the simple factory, let's take a look at an actual design pattern, the factory method pattern. Now the definition in front of us is taken straight from the Gang of Four design patterns book. If you haven't taken a look at that, I suggest you do. It's a really good resource, quite complex to digest. So I hope these videos make it a little bit easier for you to understand. So let's take a look at this definition. The factory method pattern, Define an interface for creating an object, but let subclasses decide which class to instantiate. Factory method lets a class defer instantiation to subclasses. Okay, so this is going to be very similar to the simple factory, but let's take a look at code so you can understand this definition better. Once again, we are already in our IDE, and we're going to be using the same example from before. We are going to have a CSV of data right, product data that we are going to import. Okay, so let's take a look at imports. Again, we have some products just like before. We have chairs and this time we have different types of chairs. So you can see we have material, fabric and leather. Okay, so again, we have our for each which is going to loop through each of these products and then it's going to do a validate and save. Now, um, in our source directory this time, we have products, okay? So we have chair and fabric, sorry, chair, fabric, chair, leather, to match these two. You can ignore desk for now. Just know that we have an interface which all of them abide by. Okay, so CSV. Now, how would we do this in the factory method? Okay, so let's create a new directory here, and we call it uh, factories. 
and we can call we will start this time by not creating a class for a factory but we'll create an interface for our factory and call it factory okay so you're going to have interface if i can spell interface factory okay and if you remember our factory methods or our well our factories need to have a method called create okay so it's going to accept a string and still we're going to call that type and we're going to return a product and it will be good for us to put a namespace here. Stream plus and we know it's under factory okay cool so we have a factory interface now we're going to create a factory and we're going to call this chair factory okay before we called it product factory this time we're going to call it chair factory and it's going to look very similar to what you've already seen and it's going to have type we're going to return product okay again we're going to have a switch and it's going to go off type and this time we're going to say case and if it is fabric okay we're going to return a new instance of chair fabric okay so just to open this up we have chair fabric which is just as before very simple validate leather chair save leather chair and validate fabric chair and save fabric chair Cool. So the next case is going to be for the leather chair. Okay. So we're going to have chair leather. Okay, cool. So finally, we're going to have our default case, which will again be throw new exception. And the message can be the requested product was not found. Okay. And we can just import exception. Cool. So now we have a chair factory. Again, we're going to go back to our main this time. And we're going to say uh, factory is equal to new, um, let's call it chair factory. Okay. And we're going to send it through to CSV. Okay. Because we want to handle the different types of chairs. So we're going to have a property here and we're going to call it or type it to our factory interface. And we're going to call this factory. We can then implement our constructor and ask it to do our factory. Cool. So now we have access to factory, as you can see here. We don't want to be newing up here. We want to access our factory to do the newing up for us. And we're going to send it CSV products and material. Cool, because you know we have fabric and leather. And now if we go to create and if we just find out, in fact, it's going to our interface. So chair factory, uh, we didn't implement the factory here. Cool. So now if we go back to create, you can see we can access this. Cool. So we have fabric and leather and that should be all good. So what happens? If we run main, okay, so we validate fabric chair, save fabric chair, validate fabric chair. Cool, right, that's fine. Now that is one part of it. Now, if we want to go back to CSV, and can you imagine if we started instead of uh, chairs, imagine we had desk, okay, in our source, and we had maybe oak and plastic, okay. So imagine now we have a different CSV that's coming in and it's taking in desks, okay? Different types of desks. We don't want to change our code and we want to somehow get it working. So what we can do is, you see, we already have desk and oak over here, or desk oak and desk plastic models. We can now create a, instead of chair factory, we can have a desk factory, okay? Cool. So let's make it desk factory and oak and uh what's it plastic and instead of a chair fabric we can say desk oak and desk plastic cool oh typo the requested product was not found cool so now we have basically the same factory instead we are getting different types of 
this. Right. So now watch this. If we go back to main.php, before we were supporting different types of chairs just by sending this factory down. Now, what if we wanted to do, let's say, um, let's be more specific here and make that chair factory and we can make this desk factory. Okay. So desk factory. Cool. Let's simplify that. Now we are just putting, we are swapping out the chair factory and just putting in the desk factory. So if we go in here, notice we typed it to a factory, not a specific type of factory. We now reading desks, so different types of desks. We don't even have to change this at all. And if we go back to main.php and run, now we are validating desks. So the whole point here is that we can swap the type of factory at runtime. So let's put our chair factory back. And in CSV, let's go back to having chairs in our CSV. Okay. And um, what were they? Uh, fabric and leather. Okay. Now if we run our main again, uh, main and run, and now we are supporting chairs. So you can see the actual importing of the code, you know, the import code has not changed. Okay, just imagine the CSV was reading. We wouldn't be changing the reading. We wouldn't be changing the importing. All we, had di all we did was we just created a new factory. Okay, we had different models here. So we could use our desk oak and desk plastic models. And we have handled two different types of products without changing our logic. So that is the simple factory and the factory method pattern. So two different things that you should understand the difference between both of them. And in the next video, we will take a look at the abstract factory. Now, all this code will be on GitHub. The link is in the description below. So if you want to play around, have a go and let me know what you think.